What if your browser didn't just show you the internet, but actually understand it? Imagine Googling something, and instead of scrolling through 84 different blue links, you can have an actual conversation with the web itself. Well, that's exactly what OpenAI just dropped. It's called ChatGPT Atlas, and they are hinting that it could be the most important browser since Chrome. And today, I'm not just gonna tell you what it does, but I'm gonna actually use it, test it, and even try to break it live. So before jumping in, let me tell you what is this. It's not just another AI extension. At Atlas is a full-blown browser built around ChatGPT. Think of it as Chrome and ChatGPT had a baby, and that baby learned how to think contextually. And all these big companies like Google with Gemini and Perplexity with Comet, they've been trying to chase this idea. And OpenAI just made their move on this with a working product, not just a demo. So let's just dive in. I'm gonna test every single feature they announced live right now. All right, so I just downloaded Atlas on Mac OS. It looks like a lightweight Chromium fork. And when you open it up, you instantly see something different. The ChatGPT panel is built directly into the browser. And no, this is not a plugin, it's the entire core interface. And they say that whatever website I'm visiting, ChatGPT Atlas sees it just like a normal human would. Let's just write best phones to buy 2025. All right, so what do we have? We have home, we have search, we have images and videos. Okay, so the response looks exactly just like ChatGPT's and they're gonna give us some, uh, some sources in here, some links. Okay, so it's a standard ChatGPT response with some links in here. If you click on search, these are basically the search results. If you click on images, these are the images, videos, same story. All right, let's click on Reddit. Now, this is a related Reddit page because the OP is asking about what phone is everyone using in 2025 and what should I get? All right, so it's pretty relevant, but of course the text volume is high because there are a lot of people replying to this. In that case, you can just click on this button right here that says ask chat GPT. Let's click on analyze the overall sentiment of replies. Oh, so it's basically like a chat GPT plugin inside of the web interface and you can communicate with it on the right side at the same time when you are browsing the web. The overall sentiment of replies on this Reddit thread is largely positive and helpful with a few neutral and minorly critical tones depending on user experience. Here's a breakdown by theme and sentiment. Positive 70%, neutral 20%, negative 10%. And also an assortment by brand or category. Samsung's strongly positive, Apple mixed to positive, Google Pixel mixed. As an Apple user, this kind of triggers me to be honest. And after you get out of this there, it automatically archives the conversation. And if you want to continue it, you have to unarchive it. This is pretty weird. I think that the purpose of this is to save you memory. Let's try something else. Let's open a new tab and compare the flagships from iPhone and Samsung. All right, so we have our first comparison website and we can just click on Ask ChatGPT again. Who has the better camera? And it's just gonna pull the camera score out of that. So overall camera score, Galaxy 147, iPhone 17 Pro 156, with iPhone 17 Pro being the winner. Photo score, iPhone the winner. Video score, iPhone is the winner. You get a breakdown of the sensors, stabilization, telephoto, video, and the final verdict. This is good and very useful when you have such a website where you you get a lot of information piled up together and you can pull exactly the information that you need with the help of the chat on the right side. And we still have the links. We can still navigate through them and click on whatever link we want to click. We're not restricted to only natural language. Show me the best cameras for YouTube creators under $1,000. You can still use it exactly the way you use ChatGPT, only that this is a web interface and it's directly connected to the internet. So you can always follow up its answer with natural language, just like you would talk with ChatGPT. GPT. Compare the Canon R50 and Sony ZV-E10 for vlogging. And there you go. Here's a detailed comparison between the two cameras. And when we click on either of these links, the chat stays on the right side and you can always see the chat while navigating the page that you clicked on. And it also remembers my previous chats. In my opinion, ChatGPT Atlas is doing this a bit better than Perplexity Comet because with Comet, you either get one or the other. And here it's built natively in your browser experience. That's why you will get no lag, no switching tabs, no confusions. You don't need multiple tabs because if you just want to open a different tab from the chat, you can just click on that and it will automatically open it without you having to give up on the chat feature. I think that this is pretty much the first time when the fine line between search and conversation has completely disappeared. Next up, we have a context-aware assistant, and this is where things feel really useful. ChatGPT Atlas is context-aware, meaning that it automatically understands what is on your screen. Let's say you're reading a long research paper or article on quantum computing, just like this one. It's, it's a really, really long article. Normally, what you would do is you would just copy and paste the text inside of ChatGPT. But now you don't have to do that anymore because you have this button, you just open the chat and just write, summarize this page to a 12-year-old. And you get an explanation tailored 
to exactly what you need. No copy and paste, no dragging the text, no more losing bits of the text. All you have to do is just open the chat on the right and communicate with the agent. Now let's go even further, click on this plus right here and select create an image based on the contents of this page. And while it's creating the image, you can play with the styles. You can pick from nine different styles. What I love about it so far is that it doesn't feel invasive. Other similar tools tend to be a bit invasive and, and kind of in your face, but this one is not. It's just doing its thing. It's on the right side. It's not disturbing you with anything. It's a really big help and you can use it anytime you feel like it. And guys, I have to say this is very impressive. This looks amazing. Look at the images. They are crisp. Even the logos look very good and there are no mistakes in the text. This looks amazing and it's clear that OpenAI is doing a much better job at image generation. I remember that back in the day they were way behind and all of the other big models were creating much better images but I gotta say I'm pretty impressed. Now for me personally this is a very big help because instead of just chopping up pieces of this and, and putting into ChatGPT and tell it exactly what I want, I can just right here turn this into a YouTube outline and it will give me a YouTube outline based on the entire article. I don't have to do anything else anymore. I can just stay on the same page. I don't have to migrate between different tabs. I don't have to copy and paste information. All I have to do is just ask ChatGPT Atlas. The next big piece that was announced is called personalized intelligence. And this means that Atlas has now something that's called browser history awareness, which basically means that the more you use it, the smarter it gets. Not in a creepy way, don't worry, it's not gonna take over the world, but in a more personal way. Way. And what I'm saying with this is that Atlas doesn't just remember text, it remembers context. What kind of context you look for, the type of answers that you like, and by liking I mean the ones that you interact with, and also the tone that you prefer when it's responding to you. And you can reset and manage that memory manually. So instead of a generic assistant, every single person out there that uses Atlas will get a version of ChatGPT that's uniquely tailored for them. Think of it as a browser that grows up with you, learns all of your research patterns, your favorite sources, your favorite phone, your favorite favorite food, and it also knows how you like your answers structured. This is the kind of personalization that Google has been trying to do for, for decades. And Atlas does this without ads. And on top of that, you have full control. Next up, we have agent mode. Now you're probably familiar with the agent mode from the old ChatGPT. You remember, you could just activate agent mode every time you wanted agent for something. And you saw a little mouse cursor moving around in a very, very small window, doing its thing over there and just updating you. With Atlas, you get access to that. And this is where your browser stops being passive and will start doing things for you. And in agent mode, Atlas can literally do micro tasks for us. Let's try one live. Let's activate agent mode, change the entire interface. Hey Atlas, go to openai.com, scroll to the career section and find me a remote job for a marketing manager position. Give me an outline of the job, tell me what experience do I need and what is my pay. We have this announcement here, agent mode made introduce risk. ChatGPT can perform complex tasks in the browser for you. So you can basically navigate websites while being logged in and having all of your information or you can stay logged out. An agent will use this mode with sites without being logged in. We like to live dangerous, so let's stay logged in. We're gonna get a step-by-step -step guide on what's happening right now live as we speak. So right now it's launching OpenAI's career section. Let's, let's click on, oh, okay, wow. I didn't do anything. This looks amazing. Look at the interface. It, it's it's stunning. So you get a uh, you get updates here on the right side. I'm doing live commentary right now as we speak. So it went to the OpenAI page, closing the cookie model, navigating to career section. Let's see. So you get you, you see the cursor and you see it moving around and clicking on things. You can also take control. I'm just seeing this right now. It's giving you the status. So right now it's thinking you can take control and this is probably going to stop everything and you can continue or you can stop. I mean, if, if it's gonna spend money or something, you can just stop it, I think. But uh, yeah, it's, it's automatically clicking on things. The click doesn't just happen out of nowhere. There is motion. I see the cursor moving and clicking. Okay, so it's going to locations. Let's see, it's filtering for remote, okay? And right now it's selecting all of the remote places. It's possible there are not that many marketing manager roles in here. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so it's opening marketing managers, developers, product marketing manager. Okay, so it worked for two minutes. After it finished, I have full control over where it left and it's giving me a breakdown of what happened. I went to OpenAI's career page, used their built-in filters to look for marketing manager roles available as remote positions. Responsibilities, experience, 
experience required. Compensation, salary range between $252,000 and $302,000 plus equity. And there's a product marketing manager for ChatGPT in San Francisco that pays $245,000 plus equity. All right, now this is much better than the agent from ChatGPT. That was pretty bland. You didn't have that much control. Let's try something else. Hey, Atlas, find me a sponsorship contract draft. And once you do that, send it to me in the chat in the form of a PDF document. Okay, let's see if we can do something like that. And meanwhile, it's working. We can just do something else. All right, so I see a bit of code in here. Creating this. Also, it's creating one. This is even more impressive because I was expecting it to die download one that was already existing somewhere on the internet in the form of a PDF. But I think that Atlas found one or multiple ones. It got inspired from those documents. And right now it's creating a new PDF document that matches what I've asked. Guys, this is very impressive. Right now it's considering alternatives for PDF delivery. Now this is interesting. I'm curious what it says. It seems like writing to files is blocked even with attempt to use tools like Python create. No way it went to Google Docs. No way. Guys, look at this. This is my profile. This is my Google Documents profile. I found a detailed sample sponsorship agreement from the nonprofit storytelling conference. This template outlines all the key elements you need in a sponsorship contract. Okay, so all you have to do is just, I guess, just copy and paste everything. And there you go. It was a bit of manual work. Worked for one minute. Let's click on that and and let's see all of the steps. Now there was a last step here that says access denied error might be related to the file writing restrictions. File creation might be restricted within this environment, but I might be able to open a Google doc and fill it with the contract. I could then share a link with the user asking them to convert it to a PDF. This seems like a workaround, but the user specifically asked for a PDF file. It seems we're facing limitation on file creation and downloads. I'm running into the restriction that we cannot download files directly. So I think that all these are restrictions that are in place right now and I can just disable those restrictions. Damn, bro, I kind of feel bad for Atlas right now. <laughs> he seems like my buddy and he's just trying to help me the best way possible, but he's facing a lot of limitations. Oh, Atlas, I am so sorry for failing you. Anyways, guys, think about this. Once this agent mode matures, you could say things like, book a call with my video editor next Friday at 2 p.m. Or you could even say something like, go to canva.com and make me a logo for my new company that's raising chickens. And you can just watch it do everything or just keep it in the background while you do something else. And and mark my words, this is not far from what's going to happen in the next few months. Next up, Sam Altman says something about cross-platform rollouts. Because right now, Atlas is only available for Mac OS, which honestly makes sense. OpenAI loves to launch Mac first, but they have already confirmed Windows, iOS, Android, and this is probably going to happen in the next few weeks. And remember this, because of the fact that Atlas synchronizes with your ChatGPT account, all of your browsing context will always travel with you. So you can start researching something on your Mac MacBook and continue on your Android phone. ChatGPT will still remember the context. It will remember all of the conversation and all of the pages you have visited. And this means that all of this concept that's called a smart browser will be able to go cross device. And this assistant will live inside of your browsing experience everywhere you go. Now, to be fair, it's not perfect. Look, this is one of the bugs or problems that I've encountered. ChatGPT is unable to access the content of this website. For some reason, there are some websites that cannot be read by ChatGPT Atlas. I don't know why. And also, sometimes it does remember, sometimes it doesn't remember. Have I looked for phones today? Yes, you did look for phones today. When I checked your recent browsing history, I found this. But when I have asked it the same exact thing five minutes ago, did we search phones today? Not yet. We haven't searched any phones today. Would you like me to look up for the latest models for you? Also, I heard that agent mode can sometimes freeze up mid-task. It hasn't happened to me yet, but it happened to a few of my friends. So what does this whole thing mean? It means that right now, we're entering into the post browser era, an era where your web experience is not about pages anymore. It's about actions that can be taken on your behalf. And I think that we're heading into a direction where we are not going to search anymore. We're going to have to ask. We're not going to have to click on things anymore. We're going to have to command. And on top of all, we'll not navigate the internet, but we're going to somehow collaborate with the browser. And Atlas is one of the first steps towards that world. It basically thinks with you. Perplexity's Comet is doing pretty much the same thing 
thing, but in a different way. Check out our video on Perplexity's Comet, it's right here. We're gonna have to see the numbers, but I would say that if OpenAI does this right, I think that browsers such as Chrome and Safari could have a serious problem on their table. Guys, let me know in the comment section what's your favorite thing about Atlas. Don't forget to check out There's an AI for that, the link is in the description. It's the biggest website for AI tools in the world with more than 40,000 AI tools listed on there. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter, link is also in the description. The biggest AI newsletter in the world with now more than 2 million readers that get their AI information on a daily basis from us. Thanks for watching guys and as always have an amazing day. See you next time.